Um, so an extended surface is, uh, is it kind of a, a specific thing. Uh, like logically, what you think about what it would be is it's, it's some kind of um, device or, or surface that's uh, projecting out from a base where you maybe know the temperature. So in this uh, example here, we have TB is specified up here. We know the temperature of some, some body. And then you have something you know, sticking off of that uh, that we want to model. And the reason why we're going from uh, the, the techniques we've been talking about, you know, 1D, steady state, maybe with generation, to now this is that this problem, if you model it as, as an extended surface, actually remains a 1D problem. All right, and we'll, we'll think about a little bit how to deal with that. But okay, but the basic idea is you have this thing sticking off of some known temperature um, or some known condition, and you want to model the temperature profile as a function of x. Right? We want to, as an extended surface, we want to get rid of the complication of having to model y. We don't want to have to model temperature distribution in this direction if we can help it. We just want the temperature distribution in x because, one, it simplifies the math. Um, and, and two, it's like you know, computationally more efficient to do that. So we're going to make some approximations. To, to help us understand the approximations, look at this plot up here on the right. Um, and what this is trying to show you is, let's say that I take slices at these different fractions of x over l. So maybe you know, I'm starting off, and my first slice I'm looking at right at the base. And if I plot the temperature at the base as a function of position what y, I'm gonna, I should get a constant temperature. right? I'm holding that surface to be a, a constant temperature. But now as I move out, what's happening? I'm losing heat to the surroundings. Right? There, there's, you can think of this as like a fin. right? You're losing heat on this surface out this way to the surroundings. So there's going to be a, a temperature gradient. There's conduction in that direction. And now you see that x over l equals 0.25 curve that, yeah, all of a sudden, you're, you're getting this temperature profile in Y that looks something like this. There's a temperature drop near the surface. The other thing to see is that the temperature is dropping overall. Right? You're losing heat from this fin, from this extended surface. So now, instead of my original base temperature, I'm starting to approach, slowly, the ambient temperature that it's exposed to. Right? You keep moving down, so at 0 0.5, 0 0.75, uh, and then maybe all the way down to the end. Now, down here, you still have some kind of a temperature profile, but you're probably pretty close to the surroundings temperature. So what we want to do, like this is the actual situation, right? This is the, the reality. You're always going to have a temperature drop in that y direction. What we want to do is we want to get to a point where we can say that temperature drop is small enough compared to other temperature drops that I just don't care about it. I can neglect it. So another way of saying that is if we look over here, we've drawn these, let me get some, we've drawn these, these lines here, right? this line and this line. This delta t between the center line of the fin here and the outer edge here, uh, that delta t is the delta t due to conduction in the y direction. There's another delta t, which is the delta t from this surface to the surroundings. So what I want to say is I want to say that this delta t here is small relative to this delta t here, the delta t to the surroundings. If I can do that, I can model this as a 1D problem. Right? Take a minute and let that kind of sink in. Right? We're trying to neglect a temperature di difference in one direction so that we can simplify the problem and be able to solve it as a 1D problem. Like what that means is I'm not saying that heat is not flowing in the y direction, because it is. And we're going to account for that. But what I am saying is that temp temperature distribution is not important in that direction. Um, OK, so let's, uh, let's look at the resistances here. So I got the same thing drawn. What you can do is, is uh, go through and, and use our toolbox for resistances again. Um, there's really three different resistances that we care about. There's resistance in the x direction here, right? We, that's a conduction resistance. 
Heat's also going to be moving in the y direction, so there's a resistance to heat flow in the y direction, and then there's a resistance to heat flow due to loss of the surroundings. Here we're just modeling convection. So if I go through and write that out, I end up with uh, what the conduction in the y direction, that's you know, transverse to the main, main direction. That's the direction we have to go, which is thickness over 2, uh, divided by k times the cross-sectional area that's available. Cross-sectional area is, um, let's see, this dimension here. Did I have dimensions on the last one? Yeah, w and l. There we go. So l, l times w. That's the heat that heat the area that's available for heat flow in the y direction. All right. When we have convection, that's one over h times the area that's exposed. So that's one over h w l. This is maybe implying we're doing a half symmetry model, right? So it's, it's half that total area. Um, and what we want to do is prove that this delta t due to conduction in the y divided by the delta t due to convection is very small. So one way to do that is to say, I'm going to compare the resistances. So if I can compare this resistance here to the convection resistance and show that to be small, then I can, I can treat it as a 1D problem. Um, so we'll introduce this idea called the, uh, the BO number, B-I-O-T. You say that like B-O, <laughs> B-O. Right? Uh, French guy, maybe. So uh, the BO number is this, it's a concept. It's, it's kind of like, you know, the Reynolds number or something like that, where it's a ratio of two things that you, you're trying to uh, non dimensionalize. But we don't actually use the BO number anywhere, like in equations. There's no like correlations as a function of BO number or anything. It's just, it's a, a tool that you can use to look at the problem and make a judgment about what's important, kind of like resistances. So. The BO number for this problem is we um, abbreviate it B, BI. So this is going to be uh, R conduction in the Y direction divided by R convection. Or generally, what we're saying is I want the resistance uh, in the direction to neglect. The direction I want to neglect divided by the uh, resistance to the surroundings. Right, I want to neglect that resistance. I'm going to say that this resistance is so small in Y uh, that it's unimportant for temperature. And compare that to the convection. So the rule of thumb is. Uh, if I say the BO number is much less than 1, then this checks out, right? Then we can make this assumption that it's a 1D. Right, let's read it out. 1D problem. By, by much less than 1, I guess, what do I mean? And I get this question and I get this confusion every semester, right? Much less than 1 is not 0.9. Because what are you saying, right? 0.9 is saying that they're about the same. Like I, the temperature drop between these two things are about the same. 0.1, okay, that's much less than one. So you have 10% of the temperature drop is due to conduction. 0.01, that's pretty. That's really good, right? 0.001 and so on. So usually the cutoff we'd say is you know, BO of less than 0.1 is for most applications pretty good, right? But but don't get hung up on that specific number. Think about, you're the engineer, right? You have to make a judgment of what's important in your problem. So if in your problem, 10% of the temperature drop is important, you can't use the 1D assumption. If, it, if it's for most like common applications, maybe it doesn't matter. So then, then you can use it, right? Um, OK, so just uh, let's see, writing this out a little bit more completely, let's use this space over here. So for this particular problem, we're saying that the BO number for those uh, two, uh, the ratio of those resistances would be as follows. So that would be equal to uh, what thickness over 2KWL times uh, 1 over the convection, which is H bar WL over 1. And so WL cancels out. 
and I'm left with uh, thickness times h bar over 2k. Right. So for our conduction through a plane wall, where you're looking at half a half symmetry model, like the assumptions that we made here, this is your BO number. Um, taking this maybe a step further, what happens if my resistance to the surroundings is much more complicated? Now, instead of just a convection resistance, I have a radiation resistance. Well, it's not that different, right? You just do the same thing. We're trying to compare conduction resistance to the surroundings, so the surroundings have to account for everything. Here, we're looking at now a parallel resistance between convection and radiation, so that becomes our total resistance to the surroundings. And we would just reformulate the BO number to reflect that. All right, so now your, your BO number might look something like, you know, it's not quite as easy, but it might be something like, um, let's see, how did I write this out? So it would be uh, thickness over 2K. Uh, and that, this is sort of the simplified version of all this. Uh, times H bar plus epsilon sigma 4T bar cubed. Right? So this is after you've gone through, take the, the total resistance and then one over that, combine them together, you end up with this. But you can see, like it's still it's still kind of the same flavor, but there's it's it's accounting for a different effect in the surroundings. Yeah. And what are we using for the T bar here, like the base, the average of the base and infinity? Because that, that big cube just might really change it up. Yeah. What you what you'd probably want to do? I mean, for this simple example, when you're going through trying to make a judgment about what's important, um, you know, you could take the most aggressive assumption, which is to say t bar minus t infinity, that's going to give you the highest value. Um, in reality, only the first part is going to be at t bar, or, or t b, very close to that. So you might take you know, something that's a little bit you know, intermediate, but yeah, if, if you can prove that the worst case is satisfying your criteria, then you're good, right? Yeah. All right, so that's just a slight twist on it. Um, Again, I want to just like, maybe I'm, I'm beating a dead horse a little bit, but I want to think about the, the temperature profiles and what it means when we're saying we're modeling this as a 1D problem. Because if, if you can get this down, then I think the rest of it really kind of makes sense. So let's plot out what would happen in, this, in the uh, scenario where, uh, I don't know, let's say that the BO number is something like 0.5. Right, so this is not a case where we could really make the 1D assumption. So first, let's plot uh, as a function of position. So this is position x over L. I'm going to plot uh, temperature going from Tb down to T infinity. Uh, for this case, first at the center line and then at the outer surface, or the outer edge of the fin. So first at the center line, you're going to expect something like you know, maybe like this, where you're losing heat. As you lose, as you lose more heat, there's sort of less heat to be lost, and so the rate of, of, of um, dt, dx will sort of drop. But if I were to plot out the temperature just at the middle line here, it might look something like that. Okay, now if I go back, again, remembering that this, the BO number is relatively large, and I plot the temperature at this surface, what would I expect? Right, I would, let's do it in, Maybe you get this color. So I would expect it to be lower, right? Uh, probably substantially so. And it might look something like, like this, right? So there's this delta T here. Um, and OK, maybe this isn't BO of 0.5. Maybe it's BO of 0.25, just to be careful. But right, this, this total delta T is corresponding to some significant fraction of that uh, base to infinite, uh, t infinity delta t. So that's a situation where now if I'm making an assessment of heat loss from this extended surface, I'm making that assessment at this outer wall temperature. So if I said that this is a 1D problem and I use this temperature curve up here, the center line temperature curve, I want to be kind of wrong about how much heat I'm losing. I'm not going to be totally wrong, like it's still useful maybe, but I'm a little bit wrong. So uh, it's probably not a good idea to use 
the 1D approximation in this case. Now let's talk about a scenario where maybe the BO number is you know, 0.01. Now what does it look like? And I think you guys can probably guess what, what's going to happen here. Right? You have your original temperature curve, and then you have your second temperature curve, and that thing is following right on it. Right? It's just maybe a little bit lower in, in some places, but it's right on that initial curve. Again, at any point here, the total de uh, delta T, or this local delta T, is about a hundredth of the total delta T. That's what the BO number is telling you. If that's the case, I can model this as 1D, right? I'm, not, I'm, I'm, losing, I'm losing heat as a function of position, so don't forget that. We'll go through the control volume analysis. We're losing heat in the Y direction, but within this body, the temperature is basically uniform at any given X position. Okay, so that's a good place to stop for today. Next time we'll go through the analytical derivation. Um, don't forget your homework is due on Friday.